true detective, Night Country, should be tasty like Jodie Foster and fava beans. <laughs> but it sucks. We finally get to see Clarice back again. And what do we get from her? We get this garbage from True Detective. The story of Nick Palazzo trying to resurrect his career based off of the first season, which is widely regarded as one of the greatest bits of television ever created. One of my all-time favorites, True Detective Season 1. My loud was that a good series. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about it, because I just watched Night Country, and what a piece of hot garbage it is right now, because I, I, I don't even want to continue watching it. I may watch it if I get good reaction from you folks, so give me a like, give us a subscribe, let me know down in the comments below. Would you like me to torture myself by watching more of this absolute hot garbage? Now let's go back in time. Let's remember 2000. And 14, my word, and why, why was True Detective so good? That's a good question. It kind of captured a moment in television. You've got Woody Harrelson doing an absolute bang-up job with Matthew McConaughey, the nihilist, really incredible. But what we had here is a true story of plagiarism because Nick Palazzo, the writer who's just been kind of floundering ever since this last, you know, for the past, what's his name, Pizzolatto, is that, that's his name, Nick Pizzolatto, who's the the writer and creator of the show. And if you remember, it was directed, it, uh, it was actually directed by somebody else, but it was absolutely uh, wonderfully directed by someone who got Me too as well, well, not as well, but separately, um, uh, Fugunata, I forget his name, but he was the guy who directed uh, No Time to Bond, if you remember that, No Time to Die with James Bond, that looked real good, but was absolutely demasculating of James Bond and neutered him and took his balls and put him in a pocket. Well, uh, if you remember, True Detective was just absolutely phenomenal. The 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 writing, it's just it was pretty awesome. But they he took directly from Thomas Legato, a horror writer. Not to mention, he also took from several other things, like uh, I think he took from Watchmen, uh, all sorts of stuff. But w when you have his lines, they just match up line for line. So a lot of people have done a lot of work on this, and uh, they've proven pretty conclusively that he's a plagiarist. And uh, nobody really, they didn't do anything about it. They kind of just let it slide. He eventually got like a season two and a season three, but the rest of his career has been pretty dead. He hasn't done much else since then. Nothing of any noteworthiness. But now season four is out, and it's they're they're doing it. They're pushing it hard. It's got Jodie Foster, award-winning actress. And uh, yeah, I don't really, I don't care at all. It's Jodie Foster and Kaylee Reese. I don't know who she is. But if you're a state trooper from Alaska and you have a bunch of piercings in your face, I'm pretty sure that they're going to get ripped right out of your face by somebody else who's going to fight you. You don't have like little cheeky piercings and a nose piercing. That seems like that's against protocol. Um, just saying. It also seems not safe that you want to have some sort of uh, cosmetic look that could potentially get ripped out of your face and cause you to not be able to protect the public. Seems a little... A little interesting. Uh, so what is this show about? Essentially, there's some. this is in Alaska. There's some sort of North Pole research facility. And something happens. And I guess it's eight men go missing. By the end of the episode, uh, there will be a slight spoilers. But there's really nothing to go on. It appears. We don't know if all of them are dead. But at least a handful of them are dead. They find a native woman's tongue. They think it's a native woman because, you know, see these marks on her tongue? They're from licking fishing nets. Uh-huh. Whatever you say, people. I can instantly tell by looking at a decaying tongue that th those are fishing nets. <laughs> this is so stupid. The whole show is, is just absolutely dreadful. Um, 
It's all about drama and fifis and all the things that have been this is woke garbage. Let's just put it that way, folks. The lead detectives, because I would be completely into, you know, part of the reason why Silence of the Lambs is so good with Jodie Foster is that uh, no one thinks she can be a detective. And she uses her, her mentality, her mind, and her understanding of the victims and being able to place herself in the victims' minds to solve the Buffalo Bill crime. And she's, you know, tiny. But this is, she's just a tough detective of a woman. And the other woman's a tough, you know, she don't like it when women get beat up. I mean, they didn't follow the route of Cartman, and they didn't put... So far, There's not ch there are chicks in it. It is lame, but they're not gay, as far as I know. Because um, they were both apparently, at least with guys, I don't know. This... It, it's just funny, because Kaylee Reese, she checks all the boxes, except for the ones that are accurate. So, I guess she's supposed to be some sort of, like, indigenous person in Alaska... Except for the fact that, um, you know, she's Cherokee. So it's just like, oh, as long as you're generically indigenous, you don't have to be accurate. You know, we want accuracy. We want representation. But you're not getting it unless, you know, it's just generic, whatever. Um, and look, it's funny. Nick Palazzo is still a part of it because I looked it up who helped write it. But it's a new director, Issa Lopez, who helped write it. And it just, like, it's funny the shots that are like all the external shots that are, I guess they're drones or, or like the foundational setting shots where you get, th those shots are incredible, but the actual filming of what's going on is boring and plain and pedantic. So uh, I, there's some, maybe there's supernatural stuff, maybe there's not, I, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of annoying to have the two leads they just hate each other. They're not trying to find a common ground. I just don't care about like why they don't like each other. Literally nothing happens with the case. They discover the case in the beginning. They're not, the bunch of stupid drama happens with their families, and then it moves on, and I just don't care. It's just not interesting. It's absolutely boring. And, um, yeah. The showrunner, she says that uh, she wanted to present Jodie Foster as a woman on the verge of breaking down. Because I've never seen Jodie do that. A woman on the verge of losing it and then get strength. Yeah, she's never played that character before. Ever. In any movie she's ever done. You know, like Silence of the Lambs. Where they were attempting to break her and take her career away. And then she gets strength. That's never happened in a movie before. Or show that she's ever been in, right? I, I just, it's so dumb. And this is, <laughs> I thought all the prestige, I thought about all prestige t TV and all the male antiheroes are so iconic. The Walter Whites, the Tony Sopranos, and I was like, why don't we have a bad beer? Yeah, guess what? Nobody, nobody cares. No, not interesting. In, in the original script, she was vulnerable and weepy and having a, tar a hard time adapting to grief. Well, we decided to change that. We flipped it on. It's Yeah, no, this is... No, it's going to be bad. After the first episode, not interested. Don't care. Uh, One-eyed polar bear, don't care. Don't care. And here's just one more reason why it's fraudulent. Um, and this is hilarious because this is from Anchorage Daily News. How the recent season of True Detective was shot in Iceland, attempted to bring Alaska to the screen. And again, you know how I know that they're that they're bogus. They did all their exterior shooting or some of their exterior shooting definitely in towns in Alaska, for sure, because they show some of the stores and some of the banks and things that were actually do exist there. But this series takes place in Annis, Alaska, a fictionalized amalgam of nor northern uh, villages. So it's not a real place. And they shot the entire show in Iceland. Awesome. You know, Iceland. Because it's real, authentic Alaska. So just pointing out what, what I saw so far. Again, I described the plot to you. It's, it's I don't care. There's just nothing of interest. 
Nothing happens in the first episode. If you thought something interesting would happen, no. The one detective, uh, the boxer, she's obsessed with some case that she never solved. And then she's not a detective anymore. She's a state trooper. And uh, man, who cares? It's just a, a waste of time. If if I'm, I maybe I'll give it. I'll give it one more episode. Again, I watch these things because of you guys. I torture myself because it's more interesting to hear me lose it than it is for you to waste your time. You could get in ten minutes what you would have spent fifty four minutes watching a bunch of Alaskan scenery of like stuff. Oh, it's Iceland. Sorry. So anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I do read them all, so I appreciate it. Uh, like helps. We always appreciate that. Subscribe, too, if you like what you hear and hear. We tend to review the things that other people don't cover, and we give them a, our own original take on them. So uh, catch our live podcast. It is streaming here on YouTube. You can also catch it uh, at 7.30 p.m., Friday night's Eastern Standard Time. You can catch it on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, those great places and more. It's free to you. You can join us. You can super chat us. Come have some fun. Come hang out. It's a good time. Bring your drinks. We promise you'll have a good time. In the meantime, I am on to the next one. <laughs>